Hi, welcome back to EducateTooth.com. My name is Sipsky, your host. Good news. I just passed my Kenyan basic uh, drone exam. I got actually 77%, which is okay. It's not too bad. A 65 is a pass, but 77 is close to getting uh, 80. Uh, for advanced exam, I would have to get 80 um, and have to do it in 60 minutes. This exam it only takes about uh, 90 minutes to complete. Um, I only took 70 minutes. But if I was to take the advanced exam, um, 77 is not good enough. You need 80, and I, I would have to do it within 60 minutes, okay? The reason it took longer, because normally uh, when I do multiple choice, 35 question, it only takes me 20 minutes. But because the question, I find it quite difficult, actually. I find it that um, what I, how I prepare for it wasn't adequate enough. I find that you can really, cannot really prepare for these type of exam. Um, you can do your best. So it, it took me about half a day to go through the documents. Uh, through uh, uh, documents provided by uh, Transport Canada. I went through the, there was like two or three documents. I'll provide the link below. And um, I read through it. Uh, the most important is that you try to understand what the document is trying to say. And once you do that, then I think, and be mentally ready. You know, make sure that you're not uh, sleepy, you're not influenced by any type of drugs, or alcohols, or those kind of stuff, right? You got to be alert and try to write exam as if you're preparing for, you know, your class exam, like when going back to university or something like that, okay? So those kinds of stuff, you gotta be mentally prepared. You can never be prepared for these type of tests. Um, so my advice is that just make sure you understand the content really well. You don't have to memorize it. And then uh, when you write the test, have uh, two, at least two windows open, like uh, one uh, for the exam itself. The second one is where you do the research and where you, you can find your documents. Um, that may have the answer to it, okay? There's a lot of question that it's kind of like, um, it's not straightforward, um, and, and it's not found in the document that I read anyway, some of them. So I had to search on Google, and even Google cannot give you the answer. You have to do an educated guess and do your best to answer it, okay? Um, let me show you the breakdown of my uh, test in a, you know the categories anyway. In the air law, air traffic rules and procedure, I got 13 out of 14, which is awesome. I have to uh, uh, attribute that to the, the Transport Canada's document. But oh, even though I got 13, that's not enough to get to passing mark because you need to get, you know, I don't know how many out of uh, 35, but 13 out of 35 is not good enough. So I had to get a uh, score in another field that's really good. So I did really well in human factors. Meteorology was great. The, the worst one I, I didn't do so well was navigation, which got one out of four there. It's uh, horrible. Um, yeah, I guess I don't know my navigation uh, of my drone. I, I don't know. I'll, I'll, this is, I feel like the exam was like almost um, uh, applying for a, a pilot license or something. It's like very technical. Um, yeah, and uh, I find it was hard. I, I mean, it's like as if I didn't know... Um, some of these um, advanced uh, concepts, which I didn't, because it's more, I think, for those who are uh, flying airplanes or, you know, related aircrafts, not so much of the drones, okay? So that's my issue with that. Anyway, so I passed it. That was great. Um, would I take it, uh, advanced? Maybe. If I decide to go, you know, make a career out of it, I think getting advanced exam would be great, but I have to say that I would have to go to uh, drone uh, ground school. I have to go to school, uh, you know, maybe pay, you know, close to five to eight hundred dollars to to spend maybe five days in school and then get trained for it. And I don't know if I will pass the first time, maybe second time, right? So I'm not sure because I find that that the basic exam was quite tough, um, especially there's something. Uh, in the, the the part two, the advanced exam, not only you have to do the online exam, which is only you have only sixty minutes, and it's like I think it's more than thirty five questions. I think it's more than that. I can't remember exactly. No, can't no. I don't know exactly the number of questions you have to do, and and you also have to do like in flight uh, uh, exam, which is like a flight review or something like that. Um, so you have to go in and and, and um, spend an hour and a half with the uh, flight reviewer. Not sure what that process involved, but anyway. If you decide, that's what uh, you need to do. Now, what's interesting is that I actually registered my three drones, my uh, Spark, my um, Mavic Air, and my DJI Phantom 4 Pro 2. Now, notice I put my um, serial number. Oh, not serial. This is a uh, registration uh, number. 
Okay, so you need to put that in all your drones when you uh, register it. Only five bucks. Okay, so it's not too bad. The problem I have is this. Actually, it's a good news. It's not a bad news, but um, two of my drones, apparently, it's not updated in the Transport Canada, but two of my drones, the Spark, DJI Spark, this one here, and the Phantom 4 Pro version 2, guess what? I can, now, assuming, of course, if I get my advanced um, uh, exam, right, if I passed it, uh, I can uh, fly in the control airspace and also near people within 5 to 30 meters. That wasn't there in the um, transport camp. It's still not there uh, as of uh, May 31st, 2019. But on my paper, it said I could do it. So for the Spark and the Phantom 4 Pro version 2, you can do it now. So if you decide to purchase these two, or you have it already, and you get your advanced uh, license, you can fly these two near people. That's awesome. Now, what's disappointing, of course, and I didn't know this, is Mavic Air. Okay, if you look at the uh, the, st the uh, certificate of registration, it can only fly through a control airspace, but you cannot fly near people. Hmm, strange, right? I'm not sure why, but there it is. You know, you think that it's like Spark, but apparently it's not safe enough to fly near people. Hmm, who knows, right? And maybe, hopefully, um, DJI will uh, try to get it certified, right, through Transport Canada and get that. But as of now, as uh, of June 1st, 2019, it cannot do that. Even if you get advanced, ex uh, you pass the advanced exam, you cannot fly near people, okay, for Mavic Air. I'm not sure about other drones. I only own, own uh, three of these drones. Uh, I have another one, the Phantom 4, but I think I'm going to sell that one. So I'm not going to... Uh, you know, register that one. I'm just gonna sell it, and because I don't want to register it, and it's very hard. Oh, by the way, that's another issue. Um, if you decided to sell your uh, drones, you gotta make sure you uh, indicate that in your registration, right? So, and that brings me to the second part, which is, I would say, a nuisance, but it's for safety. It is that you have to keep log of your flight. I call this log APHIS. Uh, log book. So every time you go out and fly, you got to make sure you do a pre uh, flight check and then you got to log in how, what time, what day you fly, any issue with it. If you uh, change a propeller, that's part of maintenance. You need to write that down. So as if you're flying an airplane, basically, right? Keeping track of it. Okay, a lot of people, and I've never seen anybody in, on YouTube uh, talk about this. You got to keep track of your flight okay so logbook because that was part of the exam right part of the basic exam that I just wrote they say that you have to keep log of your flight so be aware of that so, now here's another issue if you sell your drone you got to give this logbook to the person you are transfer uh, your ownership to that's found in the the, um, the documents okay so a lot of people don't know that okay but you have to do that you got so let's say if I decide to sell this um, I would do, give them my logbook to them. And so that means that uh, if I have three drones, I have to have three logbook because, you know, if you give one this logbook away and it has all three drones, then you have some of the information in there. And by the way, you have to keep this logbook uh, with, you, so, uh, with you for 12 months. Okay, so in other words, if you uh, cease to operate the drones, you still have to keep this document for 12 months. Now, if you did some repair to it, it's actually 24 months. Because Transport Canada, let's say something happened, there was some kind of safety issue, uh, and uh, uh, Transport Canada wanted to investigate. They want to make sure that you kept track of uh, your flight and all that. So you need to have your log book. Now, you can also check the, I guess, the log, electronic log through your uh, app. I guess that works too. But I think you, you should physically uh, write in your log book. You should have a log book, okay? And that shows show your professionalism as well, okay? So you should do that. Just be aware that there's that there's that twelve month you have to keep the record of, or twenty four month if you did fix or repair it or uh, some kind of major repair or uh, fix, uh, then you have to keep it for twenty four months because if there is a trouble, let's say you, you there was a head on collision somewhere in mid air or something like that, or you injured people, yeah, you got to have that. Okay. Uh, what else I want to say? Uh, that that's about it. So would I write the advanced uh, exam? Well, you know what if. I want to make an, a second career. I think that would be great because I think there's a lot of opportunity 
uh, in this field. Like you could do uh, research, you could do um, you know real estate. So many, there's so many application behind that. But I have to say, it's going to be a hard exam. It's not going to be easy. After I wrote the uh, basic exam, I find it quite difficult. So if I do decide to go to um, uh, write my um, advanced exam, I would probably have to go to school for that. Maybe take that uh, f uh, five day course. Cost about five to eight hundred bucks to do it. Okay, and it's not guaranteed that I will pass. So um, yeah. Anyway, I uh, hope you find this useful. I will provide the link before below showing uh, you know the document that you need to write. It's not um, it's not enough. I would say you still need to research uh, during your uh, time writing the test. So you're allowed to do that. So when you write a test, you can have another document uh, uh, or another screen open and then you can research it while you uh, write the test or to be sure that you got the right answer. And even that is not guaranteed, okay? So I thought I got the right answer, um, but now I'm not so sure getting 77% is not great for me anyway. Usually, I, you know, I do well in these, you know, in, in tests anyway. Th these, but th these are knowledge I don't know. That's why I didn't do so well. Anyway, thanks for watching, educate2.com.